Hi everyone, Falcon Uruguay here. Uh, gonna do another MRE review today, and today's menu is gonna be menu number three. Chicken, noodles, and vegetables in sauce. That's uh, This is a 2014 MRE. Now also what I have, amazingly, is I do have the civilian version of this same meal. And this is an APAC homestyle chicken with noodles and vegetables in sauce. It's basically the same thing. And this one has a date on it. Date code of uh, 0221. So that is the 221st day of 2010, which works out to August 9th, 2010. Now, this one we're going to review later on. Now, some of you may or may not know that this is, of course, the civilian version of the meal distributed by AmeriQual, hence the packaging. Uh, the big difference with these is, of course, they're, they don't have a lot of the same accessory packs and stuff. There's a lot of stuff missing out of this one. But the one thing that it does have, which seems to be better than what the MRE has, the military one, is this. The flameless ration heater on the APAC. Now, the big difference between this one and the one that's in the military MRE is the fact that the military MRE ones are usually going to be, cons um, the parts that are in it are magnesium powder, iron filings, and salt, to which you add the water and, of course, the uh, rapid rusting of the iron and the magnesium caused by the water creates an exothermic reaction and creates heat and basically um, creates steam from the water that you use to activate it, thereby heating the meal. In this one, you have the same magnesium and iron filings in the pad, but the difference is in here you have a sachet, which I don't know if you can see it in here. It's right there. It's kind of hard to it's hard, kind of hard to get it out of the, to where it's visible right there that white tube right there that is a tube of salt water thereby since the salt is separate from the actual uh, ingredients that would create the exothermic reaction uh, they determine that these are safer to transport than these and these are allowed to be to be shipped and transported anywhere in the country or around the world without too much issue as opposed to these, which right on the package it even says, flameless ration heaters are prohibited on commercial airlines unless sealed in original meal bag. Because any moisture that would get into that F, uh, the flameless ration heater would go ahead and activate it. And who knows what could possibly happen, especially on a flight. I'm going to try something a little different today. Because I've had some really bad luck with... The flameless ration heaters that have been coming in the military ones and taking a cue from the APAC what I'm going to try today is to add a little salt to the flameless ration heater and see if that helps either accelerate the process or have the process continue a little longer um, I know that it's just for experimentation at this point. We're going to see what happens and we'll check it out once we, we go through it. But first things first, let's get in this MRE. We're going to go ahead and open this up. And as the same as in my last two videos, these MREs do not have a date code stamped on them. So we will find out the date of production on the entree and other items once we get into it. So here's our... Here's our package here, and it's pretty lightweight. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and we've got a trans fat free fudge brownie. And here's our production date on it. It was the 290th day of uh, 2013. We have an accessory packet. Nut Raisin Mix with pan-coated chocolate discs. And the production date on that is the 15th day of 2014. 
We have our cheese spread. And let me see if I can see the date on this thing. Mm, this one, ah, here we go. I don't know if you can read that. That is the, mm, let's see if we can get the focus to come in there. Ooh, almost had it. According to this, it's the uh, 323rd day of 2013. That first three is a little hard. It's a little hard to read. So got that. We have our crackers. And here's the production date on that 347th day of 2013. Our MRE spoon. Our flintless ration heater. Let's see, we have our carbohydrate electrolyte beverage powder, fruit punch. And I don't see a, oh, wait a minute, here we go. Production date of 345th day of 2013. Ooh, let's see if I can get that. To, ooh, had it. There we go. Our hot beverage bag. Our entree sleeve, and it's a Warnick, of course. And we can see in here, you can pause and look at the nutritional facts and ingredients that are in the, in the meal. And of course, our entree, 350th day of 2013, production date on it. So let's go ahead and open up the accessory packet. We'll get that all out. We'll get all this stuff out of the way here. Now, here's our accessory packet. Let's open that up. Empty everything out. And we'll throw that over here in our, our waste bin. All right, we have we have our salt, which will be an important ingredient here. Our toilet paper. The moist towelette, creamer, coffee, matches, we have sugar, uh -huh. we have some Tabasco hot sauce, and of course our cinnamon flavored dental gum. All right, so let's go ahead and what we're gonna do first is we will go ahead and prep our coffee because we're gonna put that in the flameless ration heater along with our entree. So let's grab We'll go ahead and grab our coffee. And that goes right in. We'll do our, our creamer. And it goes in there. And of course, we'll do our sugar. There we go. Now we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and get all the as much air of the out of the bag and seal that up. Give it a twist and give it a give it a hearty shake here. There we go. That seems to have mixed well let's 
place that off here to the side. Actually, we'll grab our trusty friend here. It's, some of you guys may know what that is. Eh, we use that to stand stuff up. There we go. Now we'll take our flameless ration heater and pop that open. Let's get our salt here. Now, I'm not going to go crazy with this. So we're just going to go ahead and pop this open just a little bit. And let's add... Let's see, this is a four gram package, so I don't know, let's kind of eyeball it. and mm, That looks like maybe about, eh, maybe about a gram and a half of salt there. We'll see if the extra salinity will, um, will allow this to work better. So let's go ahead and pop this open. Let's get our entree in here and uh, we'll go ahead and scoop this up just a tiny little bit so I can see the, the fill line on that and then next we'll try to fit our we'll try to fit the coffee in here getting there. There we go. That'll it's about as far down as I can get it without making it too much of a mess. Now we'll go ahead and we shall add our water. All right, that should be more than enough. Let's uh, get our the pad, get that salt. All right, so now that we got that, let's go ahead and uh, we'll set that on there like so and Place this off to the side. Hopefully that'll stay up. Hmm. And it's not wanting to cooperate here, so let's uh, make life a lot easier. Let's take our let's take our sleeve and we'll fold that down. Get the edges nice and crisp on there. Now we will go ahead and uh, we'll place that. Ooh, that's definitely getting hot and oh boy that's definitely working now. Eh. Actually we'll do this. Here. There we go. That'll be much better. So now we'll set that. We'll set that right there. All right. Next thing, let's go ahead and grab our, let's grab our tray. We'll set that off here. There we go, that's a lot better. We got our tray. And uh, let's go ahead and prepare our other items. So, first things first, let's grab our MRE spoon. And we'll go ahead and prepare our beverage. So, here's a good one. Take our cup, and this is 12 ounces of water. So we're definitely not gonna fill the cup up this time. This is an 18 ounce cup. So here's our beverage powder. Same as last time. I believe it was menu number one that had this same fruit punch powder and as you can see, it's an unnatural color. Let's place that in the, in the cup. There we go. 
and we will go ahead and we will add our water add a little bit first to uh, dissolve the mix and get that started and we'll continue to add That's about 12 ounces, I believe. All right. Feels like it's probably well dissolved, but we'll give that a stir in a minute here. There's our incredibly red fruit punch. We'll place that off to the side. Now, we will go ahead and get our crackers. And here we go, and we'll see if we can get the hiss out of this. Hmm. Huh, no hiss. All right, and we're doing a really lousy job opening this up. Man, it's, man that package just did not want to open up. All right, here are our our crackers. There you go. The, there we go. We'll place those right here. And let's uh, go ahead and we'll get that out of the way. Um, all right. Get that cleaned up a little bit. All right. So we got our crackers and we've got our cheese spread. So let's uh, give that a, a need. All right. And like I've said before, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cheat a little bit here. And I'm, Everyone likes to tear these by hand, but they seem, I like to do it this way because it just makes life a lot easier. So we'll cut right there. And let's grab our cracker here and we'll give it a good squeeze. There we go. And as you can see, it's the traditional processed cheese spread. Tried and true of MREs for the last, oh, I don't know, 30 years. <laughs> so, I'm going to place that off to the side right here. Let's, uh, hold on for a second here. Let me put this in, on pause and we'll uh, clean up a little bit. All right, that's a lot better now. <laughs> Let's get that all adjusted here properly there we go so we've got our crackers and cheese all right let's check out the trans fat free fudge brownie so let's open that up and here we go and here's what she looks like uh-huh let's get our our little uh oxygen absorber out of the way here and as you can see it is a brownie looks like it's got chocolate chips in it and um, you can definitely smell it as soon as it comes out of the package this one's a little bit bent up but it'll taste good nonetheless so let's get that out of the way all right next we've got our nut raisin mix here with our pan coated chocolate discs here let's uh there we go let's try these out and we'll place those right here oh there's our oxygen absorber and there we go it looks like we've got a nice mix of let's see here almonds peanuts raisins our quote-unquote pan-coated 
chocolate discs, <coughs> M and M's. Mm. Ah, there's a hazelnut or filbert in there. Uh, looks like a nice little selection of nuts and others oh, walnuts. And uh, looks like there's a cashew floating. Nope, that's a peanut. Thought that might have been a cashew. But uh, yeah, that's a nice little mix of uh, nuts and stuff there. So let's um, let's go ahead and give that a shot here. Let's get some of that on there. Let's get a a candy disc. We'll get a. Um, peanut we'll get an almond we'll get a raisin we'll do a walnut in there and I think that might be I think that's it oh wait a minute where's that uh aha uh -huh. I think that's a like I said that might be a filbert or a hazelnut not 100% sure there so uh let's give that a shot Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Very tasty. Not overly sweet. The um the raisin and the chocolate disc, of course, add some sweetness to it, but the nuts themselves are dry roasted. Uh they don't have any salt or any sugar on them. They're just plain um just dry roasted plain and um and clean uh overall very tasty this would be this would make for a nice snack out in the field just you know like a whoops lost a something there you know something close to like a gorp or or trail mix mm. yeah that's pretty tasty. Now we'll um, mm. let's go ahead and give our drink another stir here. Let, now that we've let it settle a little bit, and we'll go ahead and give this a taste. There we go. And we'll give that a shot. Cheers. Oh yeah, that's definitely fruit punch. And when they say punch, they're not kidding either. Man almighty. Yeah, that's um, very reminiscent of a Hawaiian punch type flavor. Uh, most of us here in the U.S. know what that tastes like. I'm sure some people internationally can get their hands on the um, on um, Hawaiian punch mix. This is more akin to the old canned version of Hawaiian punch, which I haven't seen in a very, very long time, so I don't even know if that even still exists, but some of you old-timers like me might remember the big cans of the of the Hawaiian punch then having to use a church key to pop the tops on them and um, get it get the stuff out so let's take our cheese spread here and let's spread this over a little bit so we uh, even this up so all the cracker here has some cheese on it let's uh, Break off a piece here, and we'll give this a shot. There we go. Here we go. Here's our nice canary yellow American processed cheese. Mmm. Mmm. What can I say? It's cheese spread. Tastes like cheese. So, the crackers themselves are a little different than what the normal MRE crackers that I've experienced before. These seem to be a little different. They're 
they might be a little drier if that makes any sense I, I they seem to be really 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 dry i mean abnormally dry and um you get this you know the yeasty flavor from the from the preparation of the crackers themselves uh you do get a little bit of that yeasty malty kind of taste in there but it's very 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 light i mean you'd you know it, definitely the cheese spread cancels out that that flavor so let's give this another shot here and yeah that works really well so um let's go ahead and let's go ahead and crack open here our brownie and take a look at it so let's see here we'll open up that and ooh, pretty yeah it's a brownie let's give this a, a sniff here oh yeah it smells like your traditional home-baked brownie and we'll place that there we'll get a taste of that after we have our our entree so uh Let's see how this is coming along here. Let's give this a let's give this a feel here and see if the uh, the flameless ration heater is still chugging along here. And um, Yeah, that's still pretty. That's still pretty darn hot. So uh, let's give that another couple of minutes, and we'll come right back. All right, everyone, we're back, and um, I have to say, I believe adding the salt has made a difference because I'm going to tell you right now, it's been sitting here for a few minutes, and this thing is so hot you can barely lay your hand on it now. So I don't know if you can see here. I don't know if to be able to see some of that steam, but if not, not a big deal. Let's go ahead and let's get our coffee out here. This definitely, this will have heated up this entree incredibly well. Let's see what, how, the, um, how the coffee fared. And the coffee is hot. I wouldn't say it's boiling hot, but it's a heck of a lot hotter than it's been the last couple of times I've done this. So... Let's uh, pour that in there. And uh, I don't know if you can see, but it's definitely wrinkled up the bag some with the heat. So obviously we've done a much better job heating up that entree by adding just a little touch of salt in there before you add your water. And here's our coffee. Let's give that a shot. Mm. That's actually hot. Now, I'm not going to say it's scald your tongue hot, but it's definitely hot. And um, it definitely does a better job than it would normally do in other, on just using plain water and under, under other circumstances. This is definitely... A, an improvement on heating up that coffee mm. so that works quite well let's put that right there now let's get our entree out and uh, here we go you see this thing's still creating a nice amount of heat so here's our chicken with noodles and that is actually hot <laughs> wow that is noticeably hotter than normal under under similar circumstances with the normal mre heaters and plain water i think we've i think i've come on to something here i think i've uh figured out if you want the frhs to work a little better you got to add some salt into it before you add the water. So, just a, just my suggestion to you guys out there. 
and there's our entree that actually looks pretty interesting let's give that a mm, smells pretty good you can definitely smell the chicken in, in in there so let's uh get that out on the tray very chicken and dumplings sort of smell actually quite pleasant let's get all that out yeah it's actually quite nice let's spread that out on the tray there and let's take a look here well, we have let's see we have a mushroom here's lots of nice big chunks of chicken in here so here's a mushroom and we have a nice chunk of chicken there it looks like we've got a carrot we've got some of the pasta here a lot more chicken than pasta but by the looks of it let's uh take a look at that right there let's get that in focus here there we go that's a little better so um yeah, I mean, there's the pasta. Got I'm trying to see if there's any other veggies. It looks like there's a looks like there was a little piece of celery floating around in there. I'm not exactly sure. I got to look at the ingredients again and see what it says. See what the ingredients have. Uh, we've got our chicken, starch, uh, egg noodles, mushrooms, carrots, chicken broth, celery. Yeah, so I was right. There was a little piece of celery in there. Onions red peppers cream powder etc etc so yeah, looks pretty good let's uh give this a shot here let's get some of the pasta on there there we go let's give that a shot mmm wow that's actually pretty good. The seasoning is nice. Uh, here's some more. Here's that pasta. Hmm. I will say though, the pastas. It's kind of odd. It is a little mushy, but not, not to where it's like a paste. It actually does have a little bite to it. Like, it just seems like it's a little bit overcooked. Obviously, because it's already been cooked, then placed in the retort pouch and sterilized again, which recooks it. So it makes sense. But there's a really strong chicken broth flavor in this. Uh, very reminiscent of a pot pie. But um, it's reminiscent. The texture and the and the 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 thickness of it is very much like a pot pie but it does have a lot more chicken and dumplings flavor if that makes any sense to anybody uh let's give this another shot here let's try a little bit of everything let's get a good healthy spoon spoonful here with a mushroom on it mm. Mm, very tasty Mm. That is actually very, very good. Lots of chicken in here. I mean, definite, definite protein uh, amount in there is incredible. Uh, it actually has on the package, it states, as you can see there, 26 grams of protein. So, plenty of energy for being out in the field. I mean, uh... Let's get that there a little. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a nice... I mean, that would definitely stick to your ribs. And it's comfort food. That definitely would be considered a comfort food for troops. I mean, that is really, really, really tasty. Wow. The chicken... Of course, it's like a canned chicken, so it's a little soft because, of course, it's it's picked up a lot of that moisture. 
and it does tend to be a little kind of stringy but um not in a bad way you know it, it comes apart in the strings like it like normal chicken does um it's very moist great flavor um yeah yeah that's really good all right let's uh try it with a little tabasco here and see if let's see if uh we'll go ahead and see how that gives it a little bit of extra bite so let's add that there all right oh wow you can definitely smell that tabasco already wow man that's like pungent tabasco so there we go yeah let's try that Mm. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> mm. Excuse me for a second here. I'll get some of that. Wow. Oh, boy. Man. No, oh, that definitely kicks it up. Kicks it up, kicks it out. Kicks it in the side and the teeth and wherever else you want to kick it. Wow. Man, that seems like it's actually stronger than normal Tabasco. That seems like it's a little more concentrated. Wow. Now, I did notice on the package earlier, it does state on here that it's actually... Let me see if I can get this to, to come up here on the camera. Uh, it's kind of hard to focus. But it does say on here that it says it's packaged and distributed by Heinz Corporation under license... Uh, from Mickleheny uh, Tabasco people over in Avery Island. So, hmm. So they must be getting the Tabasco straight from, from the Tabasco folks and repackaging it and everything. Maybe they're getting concentrate and they've tweaked the the ratio of concentrate to water or, or vinegar or whatever. And that seems to be a lot harder than the normal stuff you get at the, at the store. But, uh... Wow, that definitely, that'll definitely put a little fire in your pants there. But that is actually really, really good. So, mmm. I'm going to get a little one more bite of that. And, mm. Yeah, that works really well. Ah, you know what? Let's, uh, let's try this. Put some of that chicken with the cheese. Mmm. Yeah. That works. Let's, uh... Huh. This doesn't want to cooperate today. There you go. Let's try that. Mix in some of the cheese in with the with the uh, the chicken and the pasta and everything let's see how that let's see how that works out mm. yeah that works mm. wow that really does work really well the tanginess, the tanginess of the cheese, along with the seasonings and everything from the from the chicken and that pot pie flavoring works really well. It almost seems like it's um, uh, it's very reminiscent of a of a chunky soup kind of thing, especially with the cheese in it. So. That again was really, really tasty. Let's give another shot here to the, the trail mix or the fruit nut mix with pan coated discs. Mm. I must say, this is a very protein packed 
menu, this number menu number three, between the chicken and all the nuts. Mm. That is definitely a protein heavy meal. So next thing we're gonna try is the um, is the brownie here. So let's give that a shot. Mm. Wash it down with a little coffee here. Mm. Oh yeah. Good combination right here. The brownie and the coffee. Mm. That would definitely be the highlight of of your meal right there is that brownie. It is a little, it's a little, how can I put this? It's a little, it's moist, but it's also a little dry and crumbly. I think the texture wise, I think the, the grains of the, um, of the cake seem to come apart a little, a little more. They're not, it doesn't, it doesn't get all mushed together when you chew into it. Like you, like you would get with a normal, like, um, I don't know, a Betty Crocker brownie, you know, a homemade brownie. So that is actually quite good. And uh, and the fruit punch again, it's fruit punch and it's nice and sweet. I'm not a big fruit punch guy, but that's actually pretty tasty. Uh, yeah, overall, I think this was very very nice, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save this for after. But yeah, I think we um, we definitely definitely hit upon something here with adding the salt to the FRH, a little bit of salt to it before you activate it, which definitely seems to ex to extend the um, the activation time of the FRH, and seems to create a little higher temperature than what it, you would get using just plain water. So. Top tip, add salt. So again, this is Falcon Uruguay. Uh, I hope you like this um, this review. Uh, please, you know, please comment. Please like this video. And again, I want to give a shout out to Gun Dog, Kiwi Dude, Steve1989, uh, G Schultz, RC Gusto, and the rest of the MRE review community here on YouTube. Uh, I want to thank you guys for all your great comments and suggestions. I really do appreciate it. And um, we're going to go ahead and do more of these. And then in the future, I'll go ahead and review some of these APAX that I have from 2010. And we'll definitely review first this homestyle chicken one, which is the, the civilian equivalent of this meal. And we'll be that way we'll have a comparison to him. So until then, again, thank you so much. Have a great day.